Barbara Nutanovi, Slip Supervisor. Welcome to this edition of Supervisor Spotlight. And we are really delighted to have with us today in our studios here in Town Hall, uh, Assemblyman Phil Ramos, who uh, I've known Phil for many, many years, uh, back from my time in the county legislature. Uh, and a little bit better now that uh, I'm here as a supervisor and he's our assemblyman and we've been able to do a lot of wonderful things together. So Phil, welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I yeah. appreciate it. You know, I, I was thinking it's probably, I'm going to say, close to 30 years that I know you least, because yeah. mm -hmm. I, you know, got involved in the legislature in a special election in 93. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's pretty close that's to 30 years. That's about when we met, yeah. yeah. I was a police officer back then. Yeah, so mm -hmm. tell me about it. I got to know you uh -huh. when you were involved in the Guardians, a, in, uh, a the police member of the police society. department, uh -huh. yeah. right? Yeah, I was, um, th that's when we first met. I was uh, a police officer and very active. Uh, I was the president of the Police Hispanic Society, and we were active in trying to build a bridge between the police department and the community, and you were a legislator. legislator I, and at I was that a time. legislator, yeah. and at the time, my legislative district included Brentwood mm -hmm. uh, and North Bayshore and a, a number of other hamlets. But I always had this affinity for Brentwood, and I guess because my parents were immigrants, mm -hmm. came to this country, you know, much later in life. So they really had very, very little education, did not speak the language well you know, even in later years. I mm -hmm. mean, it was real broken English. My mom was better than my dad, but there are people like, what did he say? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, um, you know, hardworking people that, that want a better life for their family, you know, and I found this affinity, uh, the, the need to want to see their kids do better. Mm -hmm. You know, that always strikes me you know, in the Hispanic community. Yeah. You know, it, look, it's such a kinship. The immigrant experience is a common experience regardless of whether you're Hispanic or whatever ethnic group you're in. You know, somewhere along the line, everybody here is going to have an ancestor who was an right. immigrant. And um, I know, what, what is your ethnicity? Italian. You're Italian. So the Italian community. Oh, in fact, where I grew up in Brentwood, it was all poorer Italian families and uh, Puerto Rican families and African Americans. We were all right. in the same neighborhoods back then. My, my family came out in 1956. Oh, wow. And um, as I said before, I was very active in, um, in the police department as president of the Police Hispanic Society. A at a time where we had, you know, a lot of turmoil um, and uh, things happening. Remember in, in the late 80s, that's when crack started and we yeah. had a lot of crime issues. And you came in uh, at a time, at kind of the height, the height of it. And I remember you were the legislator and that's why, I mean, uh, I chaired public safety, so I yes. actually probably was a little bit more privy to some of the police issues than most legislators were yes. as a chair of public safety. And because the district that I represented had a lot of issues. Yes, and, and um, I mean, so many people are fond of you because I know, and I, I have fond memories because I remember uh, you were one of the legislators who used to stand up for us all the time. Uh, and we can go to you, and it wasn't a partisan issue. It was never a partisan issue. It was always, you know, you, you understood our community very well, and that's why you lasted so long as, as a legislator there. Uh, and then when I uh, got elected assemblyman and you ended up town supervisor, it was like, you know, it was great to, yeah. to, to see oh, that. You thanks. know, I knew I, I had a partner and, um, and I think that's when we really started working together all the time. You know, we very often we're in contact with each other because we represent the same communities. We do. We do. I think perhaps it's refreshing for the audience to see uh, people, uh, government officials together from different sides of the aisle just working together because you know, I, I would say 80% of what I do and 80% of what you do have nothing to do with ideology. No. They they have not to at do all. they're just certain functions we have in government and if we just decide to, to do it together it gets done. Mm -hmm. in, in you know and and unfortunately I think the whole country has been gripped by this polarization. Even families to, uh, families have been torn up, apart and you know people have to realize that politics is What's important well, how is what you get done. How many times you hear family gatherings they say in the very beginning we're not discussing politics, right. you know, no, no politics, no political discussions because people get so passionate. Exactly. But you're right. And people are so tired of that. Right. They you are. know, when they elect someone, yeah, they may, you know, have a banner of a political party. Mm. You know, a person may vote for them because of that party. But I would like to think more and more people are voting for their elected officials based on what they see, what they feel they're going to do, 
how they represent them, and not just blindly go in there and go, I'm going to vote on this row exactly, and that's it. Exactly. And we judge you each know? other. People judge each other based on that brand, based on, on, on you know, political parties on that. When, mm -hmm. And it, it, what it does is it stops progress. You know, that, that's why, uh, you know, I, I always, I say it over and over again, I'm happy for our partnership uh, because we could just get these and sung. There's something, mm -hmm. If something ideological comes out, we'll probably be on different ends of the issue. But, but we can but, talk about it yeah. rationally, and but, then eventually you'll agree with me, so but, then we're good. <laughs> <laughs> but very little is ideological. So little yeah, of what it, we do it, is, it's really, really is ideological. It's just a matter of, well, we need to fix a road. How do we get the money? We need to fix a park. Let's figure out how to do it, get an agreement yeah. and partner up and do it. You know, people expect results because when, when we, when we um, you know, run for office, we don't promise to give people somebody to blame. We promise to deliver. To deliver. We say we're going we're gonna to bring you something. Okay, so, <laughs> so on that note, we're going to take a little break and we're going to hear about some of the incredible things that the Assemblyman has been able to de uh, deliver for us in partnership with our wonderful town of Islip. We'll be back. You are watching ITV, Channel 18, Islip Television. Welcome back to Supervisor Spotlight. I'm Angie Carpenter, and I'm here today with our Assemblyman, Phil Ramos. And uh, we were chatting a little bit earlier about... Uh, how uh, political parties don't don't really matter when you get into to government at our level. I don't mm -hmm. think you know it's not as ideological. Maybe a little bit more on the state level, but uh, for us in the town, you know, it's like just get the job done already. You know, and, mm -hmm. and people want it. And you made a comment before, and it it sort of reminded me of something I say an, an awful lot. When you run for office and you get elected, you take an oath. And you raise your right hand and you swear to represent, you know, the people in your legislative district, your assembly district, whatever it is, your town, to the best of your ability, so help you God. And you don't say, but only if they're my party mm -hmm. or only this, you don't say that. You're, you're there to, to take care of everybody, regardless mm -hmm. whether they're your party, not your party, whether they voted for you, whether they didn't vote for you, whether they didn't vote at all, you know, mm -hmm. you're here to represent the people. And, yeah. and you're doing you're doing it well. You're doing well, it well. Certainly, yeah. anytime we can partner up, because as, as elected officials, we have a, a choice. If if we have a vision um, to fix up a road, uh, you know, uh, roads in, in bad repair, or if there's a park we want to develop, and the town is unable to do it, and but we want to, you know, we want to bring these facilities uh, for for our, our residents. You know, I, I have a choice. Either I sit and say the town's not doing anything. Or I talk to the town and say, look, how much can you do? Mm -hmm. And this is how much I can do. And in the end, our community wins. Well, okay. we certainly have a lot of examples of that. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and let's, let's talk about one specifically, and that's Ross Park. Mm -hmm. Now, Ross Park, for those of you who are familiar with downtown Brentwood, there's a shopping center right there, Ross Park, and the term park certainly didn't describe what was there. When you use the word park, you think trees, picnic benches, swings, you know, a nice, quiet refuge. Well, Ross Park was anything but that. It literally was an open-air drug market. It was the site of all kinds of problematic behavior, uh, so bad that a police officer, a Suffolk County police officer, was beat up. They, the perpetrator was, was caught and arrested at Ross Park. And I had many conversations with the police on, you know, how we can, you know, make this better. We certainly have park rangers, but when behavior gets to that level, it, it's the Suffolk County Police Department. We're not, you know, police. And their recommendation was close the park. Now, you and I had already had discussions about things you wanted to see, your vision for helping us make that be a place that people felt safe going to. But in discussion with the police, they said, you got to close it first. Mm -hmm. You got to close it. You got to clean it out. You got to clean it up. And then you can, you know, have a plan, which is what we did. And mm -hmm. the assemblyman and I had a press conference there 
about two years ago, maybe a little bit more, because I think it was just before COVID. Right before COVID. Right before yeah. COVID. Mm -hmm. And that day at the press conference, we had people kind of catcalling us and yelling at us, don't take our park. And, you know, the very people that were in the park doing drugs, the very mm -hmm. people that beat up the cop mm -hmm. are screaming at us, you know, you're taking our park. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it wasn't their park. It belonged to the residents exactly, who, yeah. who didn't feel safe going there, you yeah. know. Yeah. And even the lady who owned the bakery, who owns the bakery next door, remember when she came right. over the, so all grateful. All the were, were grateful, yeah for mm -hmm. what you know uh -huh. the decision and i talked to phil and and he agreed and he stood there with me it wasn't mm -hmm. easy to stand there and publicly say you're closing a park mm -hmm. but it was the yeah, right but thing there was to a do. plan it wasn't uh, being closed just so that we, we can close it and shut people out it was being closed so you could start the work and we could develop it but it, when you and i first sat down and talked about what to do about that problem because we both had so many constituents yeah, calling us about the quality of life issues people on the street the the, the bus stops are creating oh, a big the bus problem there. in front, yep. Um, and the fact that the park didn't have two, uh, good facilities amenities. for, for no families. Amenities, yeah. really, yeah. So when we spoke about that, the idea was uh, to develop, I, I wanted to put a stage there so we can have a summer concert series in, in downtown Brentwood, because this park is a nucleus of Brentwood. It it's, is. It's right, it's smack right in the middle. there, yep. And um, so uh, facilities for kids, playgrounds, pave, new pavers on, on the ground, sidewalks, make it really nice. but. This project will only work if every level of government does what they have to do. And the county has to point. move that that uh, Those shelters. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, move the bus stop. If we invest all this money and that bus stop remains there, there's still we're still going to have issues. Mm -hmm. And so hopefully we were promised a couple of years ago that that bus stop would be moved. Hopefully that gets done, and then we do what we have to do, and everybody wins. We'll have yeah. a beautiful park well, with this investment. You know, and here, investment. here's how things happen. So you're talking about moving the bus stop. And I'm thinking to myself, that may be harder to do than removing some of those bus shelters mm -hmm. because we were there the other day. There are five bus shelters, mm -hmm. five. Three on one side of the road and two on the other side. And when you're standing there, those bus shelters are jammed. People mm -hmm. are sitting there, laying there, mm -hmm. you know, shoulder to shoulder. They're not waiting for a bus because we saw it. Right. You know, they're sitting there, the bus comes in, the bus comes out, leaves, and they're still sitting there. Yeah, if so you notice, not, uh, in a lot of cases, the passengers from the bus are not in the bus side. shelter. No, because no, no, there's people not, living, they're afraid. There's they're people afraid. Live, now, you know, look, uh, homelessness is an issue, and we need to help them. You know, uh, we can't arrest our way out of that problem. You know, we need to help them. And certainly, I, I called some of them into my office and offered them, any, anybody. In fact, I say so now. If anybody uh, needs help with housing, uh, or if anybody knows some one of the homeless people there, please send them to me, and I'll do everything I can to find them uh, to find them uh, uh, housing. I know at the town level they also uh, assist people in those ways, um, but we cannot allow illegal activity there. Drug no. dealings cannot go on. No. We can help people with their problems, but we cannot facilitate right. drug dealing and, and negative activity. We need to take that park back from people who who are committing crimes, give it back to the working families of our community, and certainly help anybody who's fallen on hard times. Yeah. So we were there the other day, and there's every reason to be hopeful. So much work has been done already. And, you know, maybe the casual passerby may not re realize it, but the property that is immediately to the north was like a forest. Mm -hmm. And now it's all been cleared out. Mm -hmm. You can see in there the MTA police, the Suffolk County police, they are so grateful because now they can see in there mm -hmm. because before they couldn't. There were people living in there. There were tents. There were all kinds of uh, furniture and everything else that had to be carted out of there and, and dug out of there. Mm -hmm. But right now you've got a clear, you know, sight uh, line that you can see in there. Mm -hmm. And You've the, actually added the work you've done. I, last time we were there, I saw you've added to the park. You've actually yep. expanded the park yep. now because We've, the sump area now is all right. cleaned out and usable. Right. And we're hoping mm -hmm. to take some of the fill when we move the dirt. Uh, you saw when we were there the other day, we had the groundbreaking for the parking area. There was no parking. Mm -hmm. You either had to, you couldn't park on Brentwood Road. There's no parking there. You got the bus stop and there was no parking there. And the only parking would be in the shopping center parking lot, which isn't really fair. The, the shopping center parking is for the shopping center. It wasn't mm -hmm. designed to accommodate the park. Right. 
Uh, so we actually have dedicated, safe, paved, beautiful parking will be there at the, mm. at the park. Inside the boundaries of the park. <coughs> Inside the boundaries. That's great. And then a playground, mm -hmm. you know, um, and the, the band show. Mm -hmm. And that park has, has the potential <coughs> of becoming an economic engine for our downtown, for our downtown district. Because if we do concerts there, people coming from other towns to listen to music, to hear the, uh, celebrate the arts there, uh, in, in fact, our community has such a diversity of arts because of so, it's such a diverse yes. uh, community. Um, that's something that turns the park into an economic uh, engine because people will come, they'll go to the local store, they'll go to the bakery and eat there, they'll go to a restaurant. And, and they'll do it safely. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it, it helps. You know, this is an economic engine that will bring revenues to, to uh, our businessmen, our local businessmen, and at the same time, the taxpayer uh, the revenues that come mm -hmm. in are good for the town. Okay. So with that, we're going to take a little break, and we will be back to hear more not only about Ross Park, but some of the other incredible projects that are happening in the wonderful hamlet of Brentwood and CI in North Bayshore. You are watching ITV, Channel 18, Islip, television. And welcome back to Supervisor Spotlight. I'm Angie Carpenter and I'm here with our assemblyman Phil Ramos. Um, and we were talking earlier about Ross Park and I think we kind of touched on everything but um, the band shell that mm. I think is going to be so very exciting because it's going to be a focal point mm -hmm. for people to sit around in their you know chairs or blankets and and enjoy some incredible entertainment mm -hmm. and just come together in a safe environment. Yeah, I think the arts, the arts are, are, are the thing that can make our community a magnet. Uh, we could fix up downtown Brentwood and Central Ice up and make it nice, you know, like other other communities. It's still not going to make somebody from Smithtown come to to Brentwood. What will what what we do have that no other community can compete with us is diversity of arts. Mm -hmm. We have so many different countries represented in 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 the communities of Brentwood and Central Isop that the different types of art and dances and music and and food yeah and, and food, food and products yep. that all this could be a magnet to bring people uh, to our community and we just have to integrate uh, uh, number one we have to put the facilities there as we're doing mm -hmm. in our partnership you know have the facilities that that can, that can those performances uh, can can be had yep. and uh, but it's the one thing that I, I believe will draw people to our community and we're not competing with any other community. Yeah. Well, you know, and I know Central Islip is in your, your assembly district also, and we were very, very fortunate to get that $10 million grant from the state of New York through mm -hmm. the Regional Economic Development Council. And, you know, I felt so strongly that CI, you know, that particular juncture that should be the downtown, that should be that magnet mm -hmm. for, you know, the arts and art gallery and and the, all the different kinds of ethnic restaurants. Mm -hmm. You know, that's kind of what we're seeing is going to happen there. Uh, unfortunately, without sewers, it wasn't going to happen. Mm -hmm. And we were able to convince those in state economic development to allow us to use some of that 10 million to use it for a sewer connection. Mm -hmm. And just recently, through the efforts of Assemblyman, uh, not Assemblyman, but uh, Congressman uh, Andrew Garbarino and Senator Schumer, we were able to get the grant money necessary to do that hookup for the sewer. Mm -hmm. So now we can have all kinds of different wet uses, all kinds of different restaurants. Mm -hmm. So with the various cultures in the communities of Brentwood and CI and everything, you're talking you know, Dominican and, mm. and Honduran and, and uh, you know, Cuban and, and Haitian, Puerto Rican have, yeah. and Haitian and mm -hmm. all different. And each of them has their own little different twist. It's not like just Spanish food or mm -hmm. Hispanic. You know, it's all different. And now you're seeing the Muslim community mm -hmm. and halal stores coming up and yeah. another pizzeria. Maybe there will be a pizzeria too and mm -hmm. a Chinese and all different kind of ethnic that people are gonna say, let's go down to CI, you know, mm -hmm. going to dinner, let's go down to CI. And you know, we've got 
two incredible hotels, brand new hotels on Carlton Avenue. You've got the ballpark, the courthouses. Mm -hmm. It made all the sense in the world, but you had this one little stretch of less than two miles that, you know, auto body shops mm -hmm. and, you know, muffler shop and not what you want in a downtown that's going to bring people there. Yeah. So Yeah, and, you know, CI actually has an advantage over Brentwood in that, you know, we, we just spoke a little while ago about how to attract people to Brentwood through the arts. Now, in CI, we already have the people coming there because you have several thousand employees who work in the federal court building right, there. Right, exactly. They're, most of them are driving from the expressway right mm -hmm. down through downtown CI. Um, you, you have the hotels there. You have communities with thousands of people, beautiful middle-class uh, communities there, Park Row. You have the market all built in. All we need is the investment in the downtown right. so that they can tap into that market. Yep. The people are already going there. In Brentwood, we have to figure out how to get them yeah. there. The people are already coming through CI. And so this $10 million uh, uh, state funds and some of the other investments that, that we've partnered up on, uh, it's all part of creating catalytic projects. Yep. in the town that will start to bring people to, to downtown. Well, you know, to that point, um, when we created the zone, the DRI zone, we extended it down into the area of CI up to Lowell, uh, where, uh, on Clayton, right, where we've got the Senior Center, the Rec Center, the Community Park, the CI Community Park, mm -hmm. and anyone who has not been there and sees the incredible turf field, the mm -hmm. all-purpose turf field, where you're going to see kids playing football, you're going to see them playing soccer, you know, field hockey. That is a absolutely gorgeous mm -hmm. turf field. There are bleachers there and everything. And you know, you gave us that incredible donation mm -hmm. uh, from the. Uh, I guess that came through the dormitory authority. Yes, I was able to secure uh, six six hundred thousand uh, to to uh, develop that field in, in conjunction uh, with the town. Uh, and also part of that went to Brentwood Recreation Center right. to refurbish that as well. Right. But uh, if anybody has a chance, if you're in CI, go to the CI Community Park and you're gonna see a gorgeous, gorgeous field over there, set up for soccer and it's also convertible. It could yes, be used yep. for other sports. Yes, it was a multi-purpose. And you know, there are other plans on the horizon. You know, the playground there is gonna be, you know, uh, attended to. There's going to be another field mm -hmm. added. So, I mean, there's a lot, a lot happening. Mm -hmm. And uh, even over on Eastview, uh, we're going to be putting some turf in. And, you know, putting the turf fields in, it's a big expense. They're a little bit easier to maintain. And certainly we could have gone in there and fixed the field, but because of the partnership, we're now able to have a state-of-the-art turf field mm -hmm. instead of, you know. Mm -hmm. And part of that money also went to uh, the Brentwood Rec. Mm -hmm. And there we developed um, the, the basketball, you know, kids who are into basketball, mm -hmm. they can play up on the second floor there and the floor is going to be redone, the windows are being redone. Yep. Yep. Uh, again, another partnership between two levels of government. We've gotten so much done, it's, it's incredible. And, um, you know, for so many years, uh, the infrastructure and, you know, our buildings are all part of it. These are the assets of the residents of the town of Isol. Mm -hmm. You know, all of our parks, our buildings, they're owned by the residents. And those of us that are caretakers have a responsibility to take care of it. But for so many years, it wasn't done because people didn't want to raise taxes. And believe me, I don't want to raise taxes. So there are creative ways that you can do things. You know, if you're willing to put the time and energy in to go out there and get the grant. And uh, we established a parks foundation mm -hmm. and we're going to be creating a serenity park. Uh, and that is without any taxpayer dollars at all. Mm -hmm. uh, and having naming rights, et cetera. But these are all initiatives that I feel are so important so that people have a pride in their community. Mm -hmm. When they pass by that field, it's their field, yeah. you know? And you touched on a subject that's really important. The fact that I'm getting state funds. And normally, if you have to take these funds out of the town budget, it affects people's property taxes. Exactly. The fact that I'm getting state funds uh, means that this doesn't have an impact on, on the property taxes. Now, now one might say, well, okay, but state funds are also tax yeah, money. Yeah, tax funds. But, but it's tax not. money that everybody, somebody in Buffalo is paying for if your park. If we <laughs> don't get, and, and here's the thing, if you don't get that funding for us as the elected official, that funding isn't going to be diminished and that less amount is going to be collected. That funding is going to go to somebody in Buffalo. Right, exactly. You yeah. know, or Geneseo mm -hmm. or, or wherever. Right. So it's incumbent upon us to do everything we can 
to you know secure every you know possible dollar that we can for our town and our our facilities I mean we just did the gymnasium at 401 mm -hmm. and uh, that too had not been touched in 50 years mm -hmm. and people use it all the time uh, that's one of the stage uh, the sites for uh, early voting mm -hmm. and when people came in this year to vote they're like oh my god this is so beautiful and, and it gave them a sense of pride mm -hmm. and that's what they're gonna have when they go into the Brentwood Rec Center yeah because as Phil said we were there the other day and we're going to be putting AC in there the windows have already been replaced and that had to be done first because mm -hmm. you can't do the floor and have the windows leaking onto the wooden floor so we mm -hmm. had to secure the perimeter of the building with the windows first and then we'll move forward with the rest. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, prior to me being elected and prior to we you being to. elected, uh, you know, one of the common complaints we always hear is that there's not enough investments in, in Brentwood and, and Central ISA. And since we've been partnering up, I mean, we we partnered up and there was a $2 million investment to, for the spray park in, spray in park. Clemente. Uh, we have 700000 uh, that we were able to invest to create the skate park that was yep. in danger. That was almost about to, to end that project. Well, we it wouldn't have ended. It would have just taken a heck of a lot longer yeah, because we would have because yeah. we had already established our capital program for the year, and it would have had to have wait waited another year to, to next year. Right. But having lost two years in COVID, I certainly didn't want that happening, and you were able to rescue us with that. Yes, the, the six hundred for the turf field, um, and, and also we Directly. partnered on Washington Avenue. Yes, uh, paving and, that. Uh, right, three hundred fifty thousand we had invested there. Um, and the 655 for Ross Park. So, uh, and now we're also uh, preparing Candlewood Road. Uh, Candlewood and that's Road. another 300, uh, 300,000 that we're investing in. So, it's important that we let you know because the perception is that uh, m that funds are not being invested. And certainly, we found a way. Yes, yeah. there's, there's budgetary problems with the town. There's also budgetary problems with the state. Uh, but you know, when we partner up, yep. we can do more than one well, person can do. You, and know. you can get it done and get it done faster. Right. So, you know, for those of you who are watching today and listening, I'm sure you, you really, if you have your, you know, calculator out and adding up all the wonderful investments that the Assemblyman has been able to, to get for us here in the town of Islip for all of our residents to enjoy, because it goes beyond just your assembly district, quite frankly, because the way that Roberto Clemente Park sits today, it's attracting people from across the town mm -hmm. because it is so beautiful. So again, I thank you so much for joining us today and, and for all of your efforts for all of the residents of our wonderful town and we wish you well. Thank you for being such a great partner, Angie. Um, our latest project is the Autism Park that we're yes. putting in Clemente. I can't wait. We'll do another show on that we'll one do and another speak show. about it. But, uh, but thank you for being such a great partner, for having my community in your heart and, and for actually Always. taking action. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much and thank you for watching.